Well, today it is our privilege to have John and Helen Burns on our show. Thank you for being so here. So good to be with Whereas you. I actually, I came to you. This we're filming this in BC. I know, isn't which it is actually your stomach. Welcome grounds. to the rain. Right, that's exactly right. But you know what? Every one of us cares about relationships, and they can be tough. But John and Helen, they're founding pastors of Relate Church. They're now teaching pastors of Relate Church because their daughter is actually lead pastor, which I love uh, what's happening there. But also, they have a, a show on Hillsong Channel called Sex, Love, and Relationships. So why did you call it Sex, Love, and Relationships? Why was sex first? Why, John? <laughs> <laughs> you picked it. <laughs> I think that's the, that's the topic that maybe has the most... Um, question marks in right? our society today, okay. especially young people. Yeah. And so we want to attract the whole, you know, gamut and yeah. it works. Well, it's a great show and you've <laughs> given for years, uh, God's given you this assignment. Yeah. So like, tell us your story. What is John and Helen's marriage story? Is it what? picture perfect? Uh, well, we thought it was. <laughs> we we met in high school. True yeah. story. Cheerleader, football player, wow. and I just thought he was middle playing. linebacker in the football, head That's cheerleader. Right. Yeah. All right. But anyhow, we met, fell in love, got married. I was only 18. John was 21. And uh, right after marriage, he got he went into dental school, and four years later became a dentist. Okay. And our story was one of those four years when we met, I was this passionate Jesus follower. I got to introduce Jesus to him in a whole new way. And it was this beautiful story, and I thought it would always just be easy. However, after four years of marriage, we were living a very broken marriage. And it wasn't because of infidelity. It wasn't because of abuse or anything like that. However, we had forgotten to take care of each other. Uh, we, uh, John was becoming a dentist. He was in school, working hard to pay the bills, to do it all. I was a mummy. You I were was very, babies already. We were. We had three children in three and a half years. John, Me too. There you go. <laughs> what were we Our thinking, Our last Helen? name is Burns, though. Oh. What's your excuse? We weren't well, thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were feeling. <laughs> My dad said, when you have three kids in three years, you three babies in three yeah. years, you know you're going to have three teenagers in three years. That's exactly oh, right. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. kind of hit you after. Yeah, exactly. But we did that and we just really, we, we, our lives grew apart. We grew up in very different homes, two great homes, but very different. Right. And so my expectations, John's expectations were miles apart. Mm. And so we really began a lot of fighting, a lot of bickering, a lot of, you know, just not taking care of each other to the point of, I thought, I don't want to be married anymore. This is not fun. Yeah. John is, you know, felt like he was getting everything. He was becoming the dentist. I was at home, you know, taking right. care of everything and felt um, it was just broken. And it was in a very difficult, difficult place in our life when I thought, I don't think this marriage can go forward. Right at the time John graduated from dentistry, everything looked great on the outside, but right. very broken on the inside mm. that I really just thought, God, I've had life with you and I've had life without you and I can't do this without you anymore. So I made a decision, I'm gonna follow Jesus, whether wow. John comes on this journey with me or not. And lo and behold, you came on the journey with me. Well, I wasn't very lovable at that time. No, you, John, you're no. lovable. No. I have People that find hard. that to believe. Everyone says that. I grew, <laughs> up, I grew up with a problem of speaking. I stuttered really bad. Mm. So I was a loner all the way. And um, she grew up in such a different family. You know, she heard, I love you, I love you, I love you every day. Right. <laughs> Normal, I never, right? <laughs> I never heard it growing up. Yeah. We, the, our family just didn't talk like that. No. And then when we got married, she thought, what's, what's wrong with you? How can you you never tell me that you love me. Yeah. And I actually told her, I told you when I married you. <laughs> and if I ever change my mind, I'll let you know. John, it, it, we know that doesn't it, work, it but right? Work. Isn't that, that yeah. can be from your family of heritage yeah. though, right? So he just we, thought I was abnormal to need to hear I love you more than uh, yeah. once a year. So we really had to work on things. People always say, you know, the grass is greener on the other side, the fence. The place the grass is green is when you water it, where you water it, where you tend to yeah. it, right. where you care for it and we weren't tending to and mm. caring for no. we thought all you need is love all right shouldn't it just happen yeah. so naturally yeah they hear the word i hear in my head as i'm listening to you share this story and and to the point of what you want it out absolutely right and and this can be uh sometimes early years of marriage mm -hmm. can be some of those tougher roads but i hear intentionality I hear you said you made a choice. I did. What was the choice that you made? So we had stopped going to church. Uh, we had, I had stopped really reading my Bible, which if you had asked me if I could ever do that, no way. 
I was in love with Jesus, and now I found myself very backslidden, um, broken heart, broken dreams, broken relationship with God. And it was, John had already moved up to Northern British Columbia to start a dental practice in Williams Lake, actually. Okay. We were born and raised in Vancouver, but we went there for six years. And when he went up there, I stayed behind. I was very pregnant with Ashley, our youngest daughter. And it was one night of tucking in my oldest two children into bed. I just took a look at my big belly and thought, what have you done? Like, look at your life, Helen. And, and I was so sad that this is where, and I thought, I can't move up to Williams. Like, I don't even like him. And uh, I just felt like it wasn't gonna work. But I remember that night after tucking the girls into bed, going into my bedroom, getting on my knees. I hadn't done that in years. Got on my knees and I cried out to God. And I had this conversation with God and I remember saying, God, I have had life with you and without you, I can't do it without you anymore. And here I am, I know I'm broken, I know I'm, I'm God, if you could use me, I don't know. I felt so ashamed of what I had done with my life. But in that moment, God met me. He met me He's in the most glorious like way. He is. But, <laughs> and I somehow thought I disappointed him. I wasn't enough. But I felt like God came and put his arms around me. And he said, I've got you. And I remember leaving it with God that day, weeping my heart out and, and coming to the realization that I had no idea if John was going to take a step forward with me into this. But I had to go forward with God. And from that day, everything changed. Wow. I mean, circumstances hadn't changed, but my hope hadn't, wow. had changed. I opened my Bible, I began to read my Bible again, literally took my Bible, and every time I found a scripture about a man of God or a woman of God, a family of God, I circled it, and I began to, before I ever heard about praying the word, I prayed the yeah. word, and few That's months. That's what changed everything. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm on the other side of a telephone call wondering, who is this? I was nicer. <laughs> right. What changed? happened to my wife? Yes. Yeah, right? Did someone, you know, Anyway, yeah. she began to just speak life into me because mm -hmm. she had the choice. Could she look at me the way that I acted, which was not very lovable, or could she see what God sees? Mm -hmm. And she began to just speak life and, and, and love, and, and our marriage changed. And miracles of miracles, somebody invited you to church and you oh, went. Oh, I couldn't get God. you to go to church with me for anything, and suddenly he's going to church without me harassing him. And wow. God was working. Yeah, It's a beautiful, beautiful story of God's yeah. grace coming into our mess. And yeah. that's what God will use for he us will. to help the world. I know you're giving people hope right now that are watching saying, Man, I can relate on so many. I didn't even like my spouse. I was just like, all my expectations were not mm -hmm. met. Right. I looked myself in the mirror and thought, what have I got myself into? Right. You know, what would you say to them? Well, I'd say do what, what Helen did, yeah. <laughs> which was, you know, she got to the place where she said, God, I think, I, I know you love me, and I think you love John too. <laughs> then she took the Bible and said, could you show me why? It's true. See, he sees what you don't see. And you need to find out what does he see in your husband if, he, he does, if he's not lovable, or even in your kids, and those people around you. And God will show you, give you a vision and a picture of the person that he sees, and then you get to speak into that person. And I would never be who I am today without her. But after she, she's, you know, started that, I got so on fire for God. Mm -hmm. it, finally, she prayer, one day, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. finally one oh, day yeah. she said, God, um, I think you overdosed. Because yeah. <laughs> honestly, wow. John, he was radically, had a radical encounter with right. God, was filled with the Holy Spirit, wow. and we've never looked back. Wow. It's been the greatest. Yeah. You know what? God loves marriages. It was yeah. his idea. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Marriage is yeah. his idea. Yes. This is not man-made, so why do we think that we're in charge? Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so, God, I know my own marriage, it's like, okay, I just want to surrender this to you. Because How many years have you been married? 33. Amazing. Whoa. Coming up to 34. Wow. So about you guys? 45. Oh, man. <laughs> you got this down. <laughs> I can remember 33. You can? <laughs> well, you know what? It's a beautiful gift marriage. And I want to talk to you more about some of the habits because you said intentionality. You said you made some decisions. We so did. we're going to come back and we're going to talk to John and Helen more about what did they actually put in place and implement to help their marriage be strong to what? 45 Five years, years later.